Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on, you know, it's declined. Yesterday wasn't that bad when I had the, uh, the Corvette. I don't know what time the videos are going to show up. Maybe the Corvette comes after this one, but in reality, uh, the 72 Corvette I did was before this and the weather was nice. I had the top down on the way here. Uh, it was chilly. I had chilly is, is a very strong word. It was not at all chilly. It was just acceptable. And I could say the same this morning, but not quite what it was yesterday. And definitely a little bit more uh, humidity in the air. And also right now it's over. I mean, the humidity is out and uh, the glasses are fogged up and it's back to just being generally shitty. Uh, on top of that, I hear birds. They're going crazy. Uh, they weren't around so much yesterday, but it seems like they're going to be around today. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on them. Also, that squirrel, I don't know where the hell he is, but uh, with any luck, uh, they won't come back. And certainly not with his friends, with their little sharp fangs and their aggressive attitudes. It's sort of the last thing anybody needs. Uh, with any luck, we'll just continue on with this video and it's going to be absolutely just fine. Uh, another crisis that's over is I now this morning did get to bring my coronavirus whiskey. In fact, the flask that I thought I left on my desk was not. So it is officially missing and probably is in some car somewhere that someone's going to buy and they're going to drive it home and they're going to find a whiskey flask in there. So they're in luck my loss and you know if i don't find it today i'll just go ahead and order another one from amazon or something but uh otherwise you know whatever i threw a little whiskey in a plastic bottle uh got it going this morning so i feel proper chipper normal and ready to go and uh, of course very well protected from the um, uh, from that horrible um, coronavirus so everybody's in good shape including myself uh, what i have today is a 1971 oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme convertible. And I'm very happy to have this car to, to do for a variety of reasons. Uh, number one, 1971 is the year of my birth. So it has a little bit of an extra special thing for me. I always thought if I were going to have a car collection, it would be kind of fun to do 1971 cars, not just because it was a pretty good year for cars. I mean, all the emissions and bumper shit was starting to come in, but it wasn't quite there yet. So 71 cars are still kind of cool. Actually, you know, even after the bumper and emission shit, some of those cars are still kind of cool, but at least you had good horsepower. Uh, but beyond that, what a shitty year. What an awful, horrible, terrible year it was. And honestly, I have no idea what my parents were thinking. I really, really don't. 1970 wasn't much better. Uh, I can only hope it was some drunken tryst, you know, after a surprise win at a curling tournament or something. Because uh, if they planned me, I mean, if I was, you know, oh, let's bring a child into the world. I mean, in this year, oh, God, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. And, you know, yeah, thanks for doing it. But boy, did you guys screw up. Uh, but anyway, year of my birth, and it was really not a great year. Uh, the, the microchip was invented, okay? I mean, talk about one of the harbingers of the apocalypse, one of the four horsemen. I mean, that immediately led to the start of social media and, uh, of course, smartphones. So, uh, boom, there's something that's to be said about that. Uh, anger and stress over Vietnam was in full gear. Half a million people uh, showed up in uh, Washington to protest the war. The Pentagon Papers had come out. Uh, you know, Forrest and Jenny were hugging in that... Um, oh, I don't know, in the, uh, the, the waiting pool in front of the... Washington Monument. I mean, it was just it was just a nasty time, and they were all there holding up signs and doing drugs and whatever it is those people did at the time. Uh, Disney World came about. Disney World in Florida. NASDAQ at the same time. The NASDAQ debuted, and uh, so did Greenpeace. So you got all that going on. Uh, they, they lowered the voting age from, you know, reasonable to snowflake. So all of a sudden you could get a bunch of 18-year-old nitwits with, you know, no concept of life whatsoever run into the voting booth. It, it's bad enough they let women do it. If you, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 
God, don't cancel me. But anyway, uh, so snowflakes got the right to vote in uh, 1971. Idi Amin, uh, by all accounts, a fairly cool guy, except for all the mass killings and tortures and that sort of thing. He came to power in Uganda. Uh, there were the Attica prison riots. Uh, Forrest Gump, straight out of the uh, protest, flew off to China to do a little bit of ping pong diplomacy with the uh, uh, with the communists over there, so that worked out. Uh, Mount Etna erupted. I don't think it killed anyone, but it was a pretty big deal at the time. And uh, Charles Manson was convicted uh, and sentenced to the death penalty. So, uh, of course, as we all know now, that didn't happen, and he's probably going to be released in the near future. Uh, maybe he should run for office, you know, in this environment. He'd probably do pretty well. Uh, and then finally, the most interesting of the 1971 news is a guy named Dan Cooper hijacked a plane, uh, managed to get a bunch of cash, like 200 grand in like 20s and 50s. Uh, they took off again after he traded the cash for the hostages, and then he parachuted out of the back of the plane with the cash and was never heard from again. It's a big mystery, you know, did he live, did he die, is he out spending the money? Uh, you know, whatever it is, Godspeed, Dan, I wish you luck, you know, nice plan, and I hope it all worked out for you. So that's, that's the stage for this. And, uh, you know, again, 1971, Oldsville Cutlass Supreme Convertible. And honestly, this is probably the last one in the country uh, that hasn't been turned into a 442 tribute. So you have to, get, <laughs> that's great. The whiskey's burping out of me. This is just fantastic this morning. You know, God bless any of you people for watching, however many are left. I, I, this old drunken guy in the morning trying to review an Oldsmobile. Oh, God. Anyway, um, oh, I'm not that drunk. I'm not. I had a couple of sips. Anyway, look, it's a 71. It, it hasn't been turned into a 442, which is very impressive because it seems like most of them have. I always go to these collector car auctions, and, uh, you know, every time you see one of these third gen cutlasses coming through, it's got 442 badges, and almost never is a 442. Um, the, cut, the cutlass, it first appeared in 1954 on an experimental coupe. Uh, that was the first time Oldsmobile used the name, but then it hung around for a few years and came out later as a trim package on the first gen Cutlass, and it was kind of the hypo version with all the options, and it was kind of cool. Uh, but the, then in the second generation, it went from being a compact unibody car to a intermediate, you know, mid-sized body on frame car, and that's really where the Cutlass started to come into its own as a pretty cool vehicle. Uh, in fact, I love the second generation 442. Uh, there was one in my youth. A friend of mine had a friend who restored one. It was midnight blue with black windows, sitting a little bit low on factory wheels. And I just thought it was the coolest car I'd ever seen. Uh, and in fact, that second gen was the birth of the 442, uh, which was the, um, you know, of course, the beginning of the uh, full-on muscle car area. There would have been high post shit from the 50s and 60s, but the muscle car area really sort of began with the GTO and uh, then very closely thereafter with its immediate competitor, the 442, uh, which apparently has stood for different things over the years. Uh, I mean, essentially, it's four-barrel, four-speed dual exhaust. Uh, at a certain point, it became, you know, the 400 motor. What It doesn't matter. So we're just going to go with four-barrel, four-speed dual exhaust. And uh, that is what 442 stood for. And uh, that's why uh, it came about in in the second gen. But it really, really came into its own during this run, the third generation, uh, which ran from, oh, what was it, like 1968 to 1972, something like that, maybe 73, but I think so. I'm telling you, my research has gone shit. But part of the problem is I'm just, I'm whiskied up and I can't see anything. I'm doing this blind, I have fogged up glasses, and again, I just see a red hump uh, in the uh, middle of the viewfinder, which you know could be one of Peter's garbage cans or his cat, but I'm hoping is this cutlass. Uh, but anyway, it lived through the height of the muscle car era. I mean, this was it. So there was some crazy shit that came out uh, during this third gen run. Uh, there were, of course, the 442 cars, uh, the insane W30, uh, 
BMW 31 cars with their big blocks and plastic fender wells and, you know, Ram Air type hoods with dual cowls and, uh, you know, everything that you think about when you think about muscle cars. Uh, this one is not. Uh, this one is much more of a uh, Boulevard Cruiser and uh, we'll get into that as we go. But anyway, they built the Cutlass, Oldsmobile did, for six generations from, uh, yeah, basically from 1966 through 1999 uh, when it was a true pack. Again, the earliest Cutlass uh, was just a trim package. It wasn't badged as an actual Cutlass model. In fact, towards the end of the Cutlass run, it almost became like a sub mark uh, under Oldsmobile where a shitload of cars, like 15 cars, had Cutlass in them, whether they were sedans, coupes, wagons, you know, what have you. Uh, obviously, the Cutlass name uh, definitely had some panache and, and enough um, credibility to help propel sales. So uh, they really exploited the Cutlass name as they went along. Uh, most of the generations were pretty good. Uh, honestly, when they became front wheel drive stuff, eh, you know, take it or leave it. I think the rear wheel drive stuff is where it at and that ran through 1987. So anyway, there it is. Uh, 1971 was a pretty damn good year for these cars, uh, particularly in convertible form. Uh, reason being, sales pretty much went through the roof, which was very impressive for the time. Uh, number one, convertibles were becoming a little less popular. Uh, there were rumors there weren't going to be made anymore. And you could say, okay, well, that's why they sold well. You know, people thought there wouldn't be more convertibles, so they ran out and got them. Eh, maybe. But, you know, there were three cousins of this cars that also had convertibles. The Chevelle Malibu from uh, Chevrolet, Pontiac on Mont Sport, and the Buick Skylark Custom. Well, this thing sold more than all three of those combined. Their sales slumped, while this thing, the convertible, sold over 10,000 units. So uh, you can't just pin it on the going away of the convertible, or I think those cars also would have done pretty well. Obviously, not even close to the production number in the coupes. That would have been, I think, well over 60,000, and the, uh, of course, the sedans and uh, Vista to cruiser wagon, that sort of thing. They also did quite well. But why? Why did this car sell so well? Why was it so popular at the time? And to me, I think you have to say it's because Oldsmobile absolutely nailed it. Uh, for whatever reason, it just all came together. Uh, even though this was the fourth year of this particular body run, uh, you know, they changed the bumpers front and rear, they changed the grill, and it all just suddenly made sense. And and it became a car that had a certain luxury panache to it, while at the same time not really offending your neighbors. You know, they weren't going to be jealous of you. They were just going to admire you. Uh, and, and it just, you know, that is gold in the car world, where, uh, you know, you can get in a car, you can feel like you're in something luxurious, you can feel like you, you know, almost are at a Cadillac level, but you didn't spend that much money. You got very high quality, and, uh, and you feel pretty good going down the road. Um, you know, that's the panache of the luxury car and, and the way the marketing just made it seem like a very smart buy. So uh, everything came together for Oldsmobile in this year without any question. And of course the Cutlass then uh, went on to become uh, an even better. In fact, at one stage, I think the next gen Cutlass, the fourth generation, at one point was the best selling car in the United States. So uh, this was really the birth of the Cutlass as a very big cash cow for GM. Uh, the looks they just got absolutely right. I mean, the split grill, uh, the rocket logo in between, the quad headlamps with little surrounds on them, the big round running lamps, the nice deep chrome bumpers uh, with the uh, air vents in the front. Of them, the absolutely stunning, and I do mean stunning, uh, Oldsmobile rally wheels with body color. Uh, this one's in matador red. Uh, just the perfect amount of chrome trim uh, around the windshield, down the uh, rocker panel of the car, around the trim rings, the door handles. Uh, you know, the trim around the uh, the back convertible top. Stunning. Also, the aero mirrors I think look quite nice, uh, as do uh, the rear bumper treatment. Love the big old. Oldsmobile badge running across the bottom of the trunk. Uh, the stacked uh, vertical tail lights all look very nice. And uh, the car just absolutely came together cosmetically. Really, really pretty. And I think that's why they uh, ended up selling so many of these things. 
Uh, just and especially in ragtop form, I think it looks really, really good. So it's built on the A platform, uh, which is rear wheel drive. Uh, that came up from uh, the compact um, unibody platform of the first gen F85 and Cutlass. And it continued on until 1987. Uh, actually, in 19, oh, I don't know what the hell it was. In 1982, it was replaced by the G body, uh, which was another rear wheel drive platform. And actually, frankly, a really great platform. So uh, that's the one you found like the Grand National on and the Monte Carlo SS and, uh, of course, also the uh, Hearst Olds. Uh, and uh, I really, did. you know, it's one of the cars that I sort of have on my bucket list. If I could find like an 86 or 87 Cutlass Supreme with T-tops in black with gray velour or gray leather, uh, it's a car I'd be very tempted to hang on to. Uh, just something I absolutely loved as a kid. Uh, but uh, the A-bodies were prolific across the GM lineup back in the day. And they, you know, uh, a lot of the muscle cars were based on these things, as were a lot of the pedestrian cars. So, I mean, you could get a six-cylinder, you know, Chevelle Malibu sedan uh, or Oldsmobile Cutlass, or you could get, a, you know, SS 454 Pontiac GTO uh, or, a, you know, El Camino W30 442, uh, all kinds of stuff that uh, really was at the height of the muscle car market. And even the incredibly awesome Vista Cruiser wagon with its uh, big uh, vent or not vent, big window on top. Another car that I absolutely love and uh, would consider. Again, I have nowhere to put cars. I mean, I'd love to have a nice big collection if I frankly had the money to do, which I don't. I'm certainly not, you know, enjoying the life the way Peter is. But uh, if I did, uh, God damn, would I have to have a Vista Cruiser wagon in that as well as that uh, 86 or 87 uh, old uh, Cutlass. So, um, you know, there it is. A body, pretty popular. Uh, this was replaced by those colonnade cars. If you remember, we've done quite a few reviews on those so far. You know, the, um, Oh, I did a 77 Cutlass recently, a 77 Monte Carlo. Um, uh, there was the Pontiac uh, Grand Prix. That was an A-body special, but, you know, whatever. Just small distinction. And uh, they, uh, of course, sold extremely well. Uh, but by the time the Colonnade cars came in, most of that emissions and bumper stuff was in full swing. This car, the 71, was right at the tail end of it and didn't get all of it. So I think that's another part of what makes it cool. Um, I tell you what, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to shorten the videos a little bit. I, I, I don't look, I'm not under any duress. I just, I don't want to do any more 48 minute videos. I'm not going to get into Ransom E. Olds, you know, how he invented the moving assembly line, uh, how he was wholly responsible for the rock group REO Speedwagon and otherwise a pretty cool guy or any of the history of Oldsmobile or how Ford played into it. We could get in. I've done that before. So I'm not, I'm going to skip all that. And I'm going to take a two minute break here, get my uh, crap together. And then we're just going to dive right in this car go over the outside and the inside and then go for a test drive. So uh, bear with me one moment and we'll keep the ball rolling. All right, so let's do this thing. No squirrels, no birds. We're in good shape for the moment. Going to go around the car and then we're going to... Uh, going to go for a spin. Uh, as I said, I think the styling came together just perfectly. I mean, the quad lamps up front, uh, the way they've got the nice little chrome surrounds, it looks very elegant and looks... You know, it looks like it has a little bit of panache, and again, that's part of what helped sell the car, as did the uh, uh, the lovely chrome bumper treatment. The way the grills go into the bumps in the hood, very nice feature. Uh, the swooping body lines down the side, uh, dipping in the doors, coming up again in the rear quarter panels. Uh, the gore, I can't talk enough about how beautiful the rally wheel, look at that bird is going ape shit. Why does the squirrel go up and eat that thing? It has to taste better than nuts. Um, anyway, I get all discombobulated then. I don't remember where the hell I was, but uh, I'll keep going. So the the wheels are just gorgeous with the color. Uh, Matador Red, this car. This is a very original 56,000 mile car. Uh, the only change it's ever seen is one repaint, uh, which is not at all uncommon for a car of this age. And uh, otherwise is as it came. And every time I drive one of these cars, I am reminded of just what we've lost and how nice they drive. But 
Eh, we'll get into that when we go. Uh, anyway, I do love the chrome around the windshield. I think that looks great, as does the uh, chrome at the back of the rearview mirror. Uh, the same funny, you know, did 79 Firebird had the identical rearview mirrors, the side view mirrors on this car. Uh, you know, sort of an arrow look, which looks quite nice. Uh, big chrome door handles, lovely chrome trim around the top and back. Yeah, it's just a pretty car, so have a look inside the trunk. Also the dual key system, which I love. Uh, I'm not sure that this carpet is, um, I know it's not original. Obviously the fellow who owned this had it replaced. I'm not sure it ever was this color, so <laughs> it's got that going for it. I would say it was much more of a subdued gray uh, at one point, but uh, you know, it looks nice and it's fine. Uh, I think it's also interesting that they might have painted the um, uh, lug wrench. I really haven't seen that before. Uh, but the uh, spare tire obviously taking up quite a bit of space. Uh, if I owned this thing, I'd probably be tempted to put a can of fix a flat in it and uh, leave the spare tire at home because, you know, my God, what's the point? I mean, you could fit a bunch of stuff in here without it. You know, all kinds of guns, drugs, toddlers, babies, you know, little kids of all varieties. But um, uh, with that tire in there, it really cuts it down. Uh, but anyway, a nice proper, you know, and again, everything just hit right. I mean, the overhang of the trunk is low, but it's not too low. It's not too high. It's just right for loading up. Uh, you've got the uh, fuel door down here, which, uh, again, is something I like, and a nice spot where Dalton didn't bother to detail because, you know, why the hell would he? Why would he? Why would he bother at all to lower this and continue his bumper cleaning into that area? It just doesn't make sense. Uh, you'll tell me that much, but uh, anyway, you get your jack stowage, your jacking instructions there in the back of the trunk slapped on in the haphazard way that only GM employees of the 70s would do, and uh, everything looking pretty nice in there. So, uh, there you go. That's the uh, trunk of the Oldsmobile. Have a look under the hood. And again, in this era, you know, the engines were not quite yet corporate, so... Oldsmobiles had Oldsmobile engines, Pontiacs had Pontiac engines, Buicks had Buick engines, and so on and so forth. So uh, that is, um, you know, again, back in the uh, heyday of GM. Obviously, brand engineering was starting to come into play at this point, but it still wasn't full swing the way it became later on when you had Cadillac Cimarrons running around like, you know, Chevy, uh, whatever the hell they were, Cavaliers. Uh, you've got uh, Oldsmobile Gold on the engine, nice stuff. Uh, this came, I'm sure this is the standard engine, which is a 260 horsepower, four barrel. Now we're really going crazy. Where the hell was that thing? That sounded really exotic and dangerous. I see him, there's one flying around. <sighs> anyway, the hell, is that a chimp or a bird? I'll keep an ear out for that. Hopefully it doesn't come any closer. Uh, 260 horsepower, Rochester four barrel, uh, 350 cubic inch V8. Perfect for cruising. Uh, now, of course, you could get the 455. You could get, you know, the W30 option with all the horsepower. And, yeah, it's all great stuff. In fact, on those cars, these steel uh, fender wells were replaced with red plastic things that um, were, you know, supposed to be lightweight and helped it be quicker, which I'm sure is true. And uh, those cars cost a fortune now, which is why so many of these cars, you know, many of the 10,000 made became W34 for twos over the years, but yeah, whatever. Uh, this one does have air conditioning, even looks to be the original big frigid air compressor, which is great. Uh, it's just amazing to me how original this car is. It really uh, does uh, strike a chord. Uh, even that original uh, engine sticker, which is almost completely worn away now, is still there. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the etiquette is on restorations anymore. If one should put, uh, you know, a reproduction sticker there or just be happy that any of the original still exists. So I'm sure somebody could tell me that, but I'm out of the loop. Uh, you see the air cleaner there with the Rocket 350. 
God, you know, it's just a lovely era, man. It really, really was. This was such a simpler and better time in my mind. And I don't think that's just some crabby old guy, you know, look at these whippersnappers doing their stupid shit. Uh, yeah, Tracy last night showed me some clips from the Video Music Awards with uh, people in like pink Speedos simulating prison sex, leaping around on primetime television. I, 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 this is great, you know. We're honestly living in Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, I suppose that's what our parents and our parents' parents thought when they saw Elvis swaying his hips. But uh, good Lord, I swear it's just revolting anymore to turn on the TV, which is why I just don't do it. But I digress. So anyway, you've got air conditioning. Uh, this one has an automatic, which a lot of them did at this time. The Turbo Hydromatic 350, which was a terrific transmission, still is in this car. And uh, everything looking really great under the hood of this thing. So uh, very, very nice piece and very classic Oldsmobile. Uh, except when you don't close the hood right. There we go. Okay, inside, let's take a look at this, because this is another place that this car absolutely excelled, and I think a big part of why it sold so well. They managed to make it feel quite luxurious without really, you know, hitting any kind of Cadillac level or anything. Oh, look at this, sun visor's down. Let's see, I'm a symmetry guy. It drives me nuts. Everything has to have kind of a little bit of symmetry to it, or I go nuts. But um, uh, let's see if we can get in here. Yeah, there's, oh boy. Okay. There is the back seat where you're going to stuff your Canadians. You can fit three of them back there, no problem. It's that, you know, slidey vinyl stuff, so they're going to be sliding around the place. But uh, at least they have ashtrays on the side, and they've got little courtesy lamps so they can see what their legs are up to. And uh, otherwise, they're going to be pretty damn chipper back there, although there's nowhere at all to store a gun. I mean, don't even think about it. Uh, gun storage is completely out the window on this car. Um... And there it is. So that's a nice place to sit. And here's a convertible that seats five. And you could also get it with a bench seat. So you could seat six. You know, this is just not the kind of stuff they make anymore, which is such a damn shame. Uh, the door panels, very nice treatment. Uh, lots of that, uh, you know, famous GM simulated wood. Uh, I even like the little patina in the armrest where you can sort of see where, you know, the guy's nails hit it over the course of... God, how old is this thing now? It's as old as me. So 50, 50 friggin' years old, this car. Unbelievable. That just depresses me to even think about. But there it is. So anyway, you know, a nice door panel treatment. Uh, has window cranks. Didn't have the power windows, but still manages to look a little bit upmarket. Uh, also, this guy opted, whoever ordered it originally, for the Stratos bench seats, which are bench seats. See the coronavirus whiskey. You know, I, I, as it turns out, after the Corvette, I've now decided that I make all these snafus sober as well. So uh, it's probably just early onset dementia. But anyway, this one has the Stratos bucket seats with the center console, which is a very nice feature. If it was going to have one important option, I'm glad that's the one because it makes it kind of a, uh, a neat looking piece. Um, and I'll get into the particulars of it when we sit down. But very, very comfortable and very attractive. And the black vinyl contrasts very nicely with the Matador Red. Just looks lovely. There's our body by Fisher. Let's hop in and see what we got. You know, even the door, the way it closes, it doesn't have that, you know, aftershock where you, some of these worn out GM cars, you close the door, you hear the window rattling, the door locks rattling, and it just sounds like the whole thing's coming apart. This one still sounds pretty nice. Uh, the dashboard, very nice layout, quite tall, actually. It seems to take up quite a lot of, where is this thing? Look at him, right there. I swear to God, if that thing takes a shit on my head as we pull away. I am going to go in and get the gun out and start firing blindly. I don't care what I hit. Anyway, um, you see, then I lose my place. Okay, look, over here you've got your uh, mirror adjustment. Very, very nice. I don't see a passenger side mirror adjustment, which actually really annoys me uh, because it's one of those deals where unless you have a friend handy, you have to adjust the thing, get back in your seat, look at it, go back, adjust it again, get back in your seat. Uh, you know, come on, man, give us a remote passenger side mirror. Honestly, I'd like Mercedes style, I'd rather have the power mirror or the remote mirror for the passenger side than the driver's side. I mean, this one I can 
adjust right here. Right here. Why do I need to adjust it here? What difference does it make? Make this one for the damn passenger side and uh, the world will be a much easier and better place. But anyway, uh, I digress. So you've got three big gauges uh, in front of you. Now, I imagine there was a gauge package where you could have a tack. I'm sure the 442s had that and uh, probably some other gauges within them so you'd know oil pressure. Uh, this one just does basically the idiot light. So you've got the generator light, the oil light. You know, basically your engine is seized light because by the time it comes on, forget it. Uh, your brake light, when that comes on, don't bother trying to stop. And uh, your hot light, which is is, you know time to replace the head gasket light so uh, you got all those you've got 120 mile an hour speedo uh, there you see just uh, 54,000 miles on the clock uh, this one the, the speedo has a little bit of a noisy gear to it apparently when the two snowflake girls did their video on this car a couple of I don't know, last week sometime uh, <laughs> one of the great investigators on YouTube were like, oh that oh that thing's got a valve tick so oh, there's valve train problems in that car you know I, I swear to God, Bring a Trailer has destroyed so many people. You've got like four really clever guys who actually know what the hell they're doing. And then 400 goofballs who definitely want to try and, you know, shoot a car down because it's a arrow in their quiver, uh, uh, you know, a notch in their belt or whatever you want to call it. So I tell you what, man, it's tough having stuff on the Internet because people just rip it apart, whether the hell they know what they're talking about or not. So... Oh, God. Anyway, there it is. Again, I like the chrome trim. I like the uh, wood. I like the way it all blends together. Over here, you've got your wipers. You've got your power top, which works great in this car. Put it down this morning. Uh, you've got a tilt wheel, which is lovely. Um, this one has some stupid leather wheel skin on the uh, steering wheel and I don't want to pull it off unless I know what's underneath. My guess is that it's going to be perfect but um, you know the, you know, once you remove it you removed it and it's not easy to go back on so uh, I imagine if someone wants to buy this car they can request to have that taken off to see what's underneath. I'd like to see that myself. Uh, over here you've got air conditioning which is actually working in this car which is great and I love this. I abs This the whole thing I absolutely Absolutely love. So you've got this great high-end Clarion stereo from uh, what appears to be the mid to early 1980s. Probably this guy drove into a, you know, pretty fancy. We had a place in town called Stereo Garage where you'd go in. They had all the Alpines on the wall. It was like, oh man, was it a big deal to me as a as a young punk. And uh, this guy obviously went in a place like this. This does appear to be a pretty high-end uh, Clarion stereo from um, I would say the early 80s. Definitely made in. Japan and still sounds great and uh, they've got to, I don't know if these are replacement speakers in here they added them and I don't think these are a factory speaker location which is kind of a shame because you cut into something that you know is original may have had speakers there to begin with but either way the radio in this car sounds great and uh, I wouldn't complain at all and now that it's like 30 years old the stereo setup it's kind of cool and vintage in its own way this is neat this is obviously some kind of an Oldsmobile uh, restoration piece someone is offering I don't know if it's current or old or you know when it came out uh, but uh, it's meant to simulate an 8-track which is kind of a shame because I'd like to have an 8-track you've got these fake knobs and tones and whatnot but if you lift it up You've got a hidden compartment for your drugs. No, I wish it was drugs because then I'd be happy this morning. Uh, but what do we have here? We have some sort of an equalizer also by Clarion. Probably connects with old DIN plugs. And uh, because somebody took the time to set this thing the way they wanted to, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to screw with somebody's EQ settings. But uh, I don't know. I just find this really cool and catchy. And uh, it's uh, you can just tell somebody spent some money on this setup. Uh, you got a glove box over here here uh, with uh, some crap in there. You've got some kind of an Oldsmobile mirror and uh, otherwise everything kind of nice and as it should be. Uh, it took me, for whatever reason, I was trying to charge my phone and I was like, this must be the only 70s car in the world uh, without an obvious ashtray. Well, it turned out again, that's more of the dementia because boom, there it is and I found it. Uh, so there's your ashtray up in the dash which slides out. I mean, <laughs> it is such interesting crap. 
up from uh, GM. But in a pinch, you do have to aim your cigarette in the right location if you're going to use it, because otherwise you're going to hit this, you're going to hit this. You know, a guy with my reflexes could be in trouble. But uh, anyway, that's kind of a neat, cool hidden ashtray. Uh, I do like the center console. Uh, this is actually just exactly wide enough for a pack of cigarettes. I checked that myself, and uh, I'm sure that's related to the, uh, you know, pre-70s disco cigarette movement. You know, driving around listening to Jimi Hendrix and smoking Newports. Uh, I do like the... Um, uh, center console shifter for the uh, Turbo Hydra 350. It's got the little T bar, you know, sort of simulates a four speed, kind of a cool wood knob on top, and uh, actually does have a park lockout. Uh, if Audi had that back in 1971, then some toddlers wouldn't be killed and they wouldn't have had that uh, long in their, you know, time when, you know, nobody bought their damn cars because they were killing people. So uh, kudos to Oldsmobile for beating out Audi on that one. Uh, here you have a lockable center console which isn't locked is it actually locked what's insane Let me get in here for a minute who the hell locked this thing no <laughs> well this is going well Oh, there we go. And the way that thing pops up. Now you have a little bit of gun storage, okay? I mean, this is a good place. You could even put like a, probably a four or six inch Colt Python in there. Certainly a detective special of some kind. And uh, if you even, if you want to go a little bit more modern, just about any, uh, you know, pistol will fit in there. Never mind a big revolver. And uh, being the 70s, of course, you could fit all kinds of eight tracks or acid or marijuana bags or you know whatever it is people needed in the 70s so uh, that's a cool little feature and I do like the center console I just love the way it all comes together uh, yeah, I like also by the way the way the uh, rearview mirror is actually connected to the frame of the windshield and not a button on the friggin windshield I've spent like the last month assembling and replacing stupid glued on rear view mirror buttons uh, in Naples weather with the humidity and the heat tends to melt them off so uh, I, it's just one of the things that I do I glue them I put my thumb on them I hold them for two minutes I mount the mirror the next day and then it instantly falls off in my hands again so uh, a lot of hate in my heart over that uh, nice little sun visor set up all very lovely uh, let's fire this thing up and go for a drive I'm telling you, man, this thing is so original. It's got like Cadillac mufflers on there. I mean, you can barely hear it. I can't, I mean, man, these cars immediately got, you know, cherry bombs or turbo mufflers and Krager SS's and all kinds of modifications from young punk kids who turned them into hot rods. Uh, to find one that still has that factory quiet sound to it, uh, it's just very, very impressive. And, um, you know, it's ready for you to put something a little bit more boomy on there if you like it. But uh, frankly, I would leave it like this because I think it suits the character of the car, which is kind of cool, smooth cruising. So uh, to shift, you lift up, actually push down on the little uh, wooden ball, get over into drive, and now we can creep our way forward. I should have flipped over the air cleaners. You get that big secondary sound. But anyway, look, okay, here I'm stopped, okay? Uh, let me get it neutral. I'm going to rev it. Okay, you can clearly hear there's no valve clatter of any kind. So once we start rolling and if this uh, speedo starts click clicking a little bit, uh, please know that it's not the damn valves clattering. It's just the stupid speedometer cable. So save yourself from pointing that out. All right, I won't make you wait for the gate and all that. I'm gonna wait till we get to the end of the road. Oh shit, I'm gonna actually put my tag on the back, then get to the end of the road, and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so again, this thing is not set up to be the insane muscle car era cursed olds or 442 with the 455 and the four speed. Uh, this thing is a real boulevard cruiser, and I'm in danger of losing credibility when I say this, as I do a lot, but oh my god, this has got to be one of the finest driving old collector cars that I've been in in 20 years. Uh, you know, very few cars give me the... 
the, the, the confidence to, with the thought that I could daily drive them or speed on a highway or otherwise just go down the road normally without thinking about being in an old car. And for whatever reason, this 54,000 mile example is one of them. Uh, maybe because it's a real 54,000 mile example and not one that's been engineered. But uh, it is shocking how nice it is to drive it. And I tell you what, man, after driving one of these full frame, body on frame platforms, you really do get a feel for what we've lost. Uh, in terms of uh, the way cars are built today. Nothing else feels like this uh, without getting into trucks. And of course, then they've got their own other things going on with them. So it is just an era that's gone and it's a shame and uh, I miss it. And I wish, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just living in the past, but I think it'd be cool if they were still building something like it today. Uh, what do we have in the radio? We have commercials. Yeah, for the love of God, what else would we have? So look, I'm not going to start over-talking the whole thing. I mean, you get the point. What a beautiful cruising car. What a lovely car to drive. What a fun thing to take down the boulevard. And uh, I can see why Cutlasses trade a bit higher uh, than some of the uh, cars they shared a platform with, you know, in terms of, uh, certainly in terms of their more standard models. They just are a nice, nice cruiser, and they're a very easy, collectible car to own. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of quiet driving after this, but uh, this one, not my car, available at Auto House of Naples, if you have an interest. Uh, kudos to them for letting me use it for a video. Uh, on the web at autohousenaples.com uh, or by phone at 239-263-8500. And I'll tell you right now, man, if you order this thing, get it shipped to you, you're going to be very, very friggin' happy when it arrives. Uh, that's my little sales pitch, and uh, I have nothing to gain from it. I just really am enamored of this car. Uh, it's such a sweet driver, so uh, I'm going to try and get something fun going. We'll have a few more cars coming up, and uh, really appreciate you guys having a look. Love reading the comments. Have a joy doing that, and uh, I just can't thank everybody enough who, uh, who suffers through these things and watches any of them. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it, and we will see you with the next one. Take care.